What's up y'all, it's your girl Dr. Nina and I'm super excited because we talking all things shower routine. You know your girl love being in the shower, talking about the shower, how to get odor free. I guess it's worse things we could be discussing, right? But we're gonna get into their feminine hygiene, how to increase our levels of skincare, shaving methods, also reducing acne scars and hyperpigmentation. I'm gonna speak a little bit more about what I'm using and why during these cooler months, and also how I'm staying more hydrated, moisturized, and less thirsty. Okay. I'm also going to share some items that are new that I've been rotating through the routine that have kept me buttery, silky, soft, and smooth. And no, I'm not Moses and I'm definitely not parting any Red Seas, but today I am coming with my shower routine commandments that might help you along your way. Now, all items that I discussed today can be found down below in the good old information section. And y'all, don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment, share, and subscribe. And also click on those notification bells so you can know when I upload on Thursdays and Sundays. Make sure you also check out my Now That's Life podcast, which is now live. And you can check it out on all your major podcasting platforms. Links to my podcast can be found down below in the information section. Now, the first thing is thou shalt be clean. Now, have you ever gotten into a dirty tub? It doesn't exactly make you want to get clean. So make sure that your area in which you get clean is already clean it'll promote you feeling cleaner and wanting to be more comfortable in that space while getting clean my next commandment is thou shalt cleanse and take care of that v that cookie that muffin that precious lamb whatever you call it make sure you're taking care of her now I've been rotating the Pangea wash as well as their other hygiene products throughout my routine and I have been pleasantly surprised. And I partner with them to bring you guys today's video. Now why have I really loved the Pangea wash after learning more about it? I love that their owner is a young black PhD candidate that was kind and knowledgeable. I just had to learn more. So let me school y'all for a moment. The normal vaginal pH is between 3.5 and 4.5 and a lot of us women throw that off by using regular cleansers and other things down there that cause us a lot of problems with odor, itchiness, increased discharge or negative discharge. A lot of other issues can occur because of that. The cleansers that we use in our body are at a pH of five. That's what we use to wash our skin with. So if we're putting that down in that area, you're gonna see an increase in negative things that you don't wanna see like that odor, that itchiness, those infections, and even an increase in excessive discharge. And that's why it's important to use a plant-based wash like the Pangea wash. It's pH balanced just right for your V. It's also plant-based and vegan, and it's made with honeysuckle and rose essential oils, which are antiviral and antibacterial. It can be used really well to not only clean your V, but also back to your behind. There's one that's a large size, as well as a smaller TSA travel approved size. They also sent me their goddess butter as well as their sea shat natural fragrance oil. So check my link out down below in the information section and use my code Dr. Nina for 10% off your first order. So when I use it, I simply put it into my hands and I rub it gently over my external area. I'm making sure that I'm only cleansing gently. Y'all stop washing yourself down there like it's a ridiculous area or some land not associated with your body. Be very careful with your V. Wash like you love it. Otherwise, if it ain't water, it ain't touching it down there. And I certainly don't use any rags down in that area because they carry bacteria. I want to point out that throughout any showers or baths, I always use lukewarm water. The reason for this is you don't want to strip your skin. Using super hot water is going to leave you dry and dusty, literally. So make sure that you watch those water levels and also make sure that you're preparing for only being in the shower between five to 10 minutes. So you're not stripping the moisture out of your skin, especially in cooler months. Now, another big commandment for me is thou shalt exfoliate. And I do that at least two to three times a week, either mechanically through a home scrub or a homemade scrub. And I love doing this because it really prepares my skin for any hydrators, any moisturizers, any serums, any of that. But you guys see me doing this mechanically with a brush. So I love to use my Spin for Perfect Skin, which helps with smoothing out the skin, getting rid of that top layer of skin, preparing it for the things that you need to prepare it for. And it also doesn't over dry and it's very much good on sensitive skin for me. And then I also love doing my home 
home scrubs. Y'all know I love making a scrub. And during this time of year, lavender is amazing. Not only does it have a therapeutic scent, but it serves as an antibacterial and also an anti-inflammatory properties in it. And for those knees and elbows, when I make this thing, my skin feels like brand new. But I love this scrub because it leaves me feeling very much moisturized and I feel good. I've actually included all of the components of it and how much of everything you need down below in the information section. So make sure you check that out. But basically I just take my exfoliator of choice all over my body. Usually if I'm using my brush, I'm gonna use Castile soap. Castile soap is just good for removing the body of impurities, all of those different things. And it's good for sensitive skin, I've found for me. And over time, I don't find my skin to be stripped. I find it good for psoriasis and eczema, all of those skin conditions. So I really love this method, but then also I love that lavender scrub because it leaves you feeling good, smelling good. And I just love to rotate these exfoliators whenever it's time Time for me to make sure that I'm taking care of my skin at least two to three times a week. Now I've told you guys before that hair removal down there is near and dear to my heart, but it's far and few in between. And because I have hydrodinitis superativa, I really don't do a whole lot of shaving or any waxing. Waxing doesn't seem to work well with my skin. So I just usually use my little designated clean scissors or shears to clear the area out very nicely and cut it down very low. Now, if I do shave just a little bit, I'm very careful about that and how often I do it because the itch munging itch will come and get you when you least expect it. Like when you're standing in a store or when you're at Walmart in an extra long line, you don't want that look. Now I do keep aloe vera gel or even witch hazel around if I do become irritated in those areas due to shaving. And I use it immediately after and take it over the area so that it can soothe it and also moisturize it and keep it from getting any infections or ingrown hairs. Now my next commandment is thou shalt have a shave routine. And if you're interested in my step-by-step -step shave routine, please check the links below where I gave a full and detailed explanation of how I shave various parts of my body, including the bikini line, under my arms, my legs, all the works. Now I shave with a Chic Hydro Silk with the bikini trimmer on the end, as well as the Pure Silk Shaving Cream. I love that stuff because it just runs smoothly over my skin. If I'm extra dry, I use Suave Coconut Conditioner. It is a lifesaver in those dry months. Now the shaver I use has a maneuverable head, meaning that it moves and it moves over the curves of my body naturally. You want something like this because you don't want to do a test run over speed bumps. That's not <laughs> what we are about to do. You also want to make sure that it's like that because it's going to glide over the areas like your ankles and behind the backs of your legs where your knees dip in or over your thighs. I know I got thicker thighs. I need to make sure that I take my time as well because this ain't the Indy 500. When you're doing this, when you got time for nicks, cuts, and bruises, and the extra scars on our body. Also, you want to make sure that you're shaving with the direction of your hair. Hairy people like me have hair that grows in so many different directions, so I make the call and look at it before I shave. Make sure you look at your body first and know the direction your hair grows. I also replace the razor heads every one to two weeks based on what they looking like. Now some of them, you know, during the winter I can preserve them a bit longer, at least two weeks. And then I make sure that I'm rinsing them and keeping them rust free because we certainly don't want to get tetanus out here. I also make sure that once I'm done with them and have used them thoroughly, I rinse them really, really well, hang them somewhere where they can dry and store them in a cool, dry area. Another good thing to do is to make sure that your shaver has like a moisture strip on it so that it's keeping your body nice and moisturized as it goes over it, as opposed to a dry shave. Once I'm done, like clockwork, I like to use a loofah and some black soap. I love the African black soap by Shea Moisture. It's amazing and it's good for eczema, psoriasis, and other skin conditions. I wash the entire body and I focus on my pits. Yes, those underarms. A large concentration of apocrine glands live there and so they can cause a height in sweat which can cause more odor. And to reduce this, even in the winter, I sometimes wash that area with clear dial antibacterial soap. What this does is it cuts down on the level of bacteria which could cut down on the level of odor. 
I also keep them shaved because as we know, hair can hold older. And if you don't want to use the same shaver that you've used across your body, just use disposable ones. I also use acne wash on my body. If it's delicate for my skin or my facial skin, it's usually good for my body as well. And that's how I help to reduce acne, especially during these cooler months. And I love a good moisturizing cleanser as well on my body. To cut down on scarring and hyperpigmentation, you also want to make sure you keep your loofahs clean. I told you guys before, my mommy taught me to make sure that I throw my loofahs, my sponges, all of those different things into the washer maybe once or every other week. And I like to make sure that I replace things like that at least once a month. A good old loofah costs you a dollar or two, y'all. It ain't gonna kill you to replace a loofah, but it will save you a world of hyperpigmentation and scarring. The next commandment is to make sure that your towel blotting dry or air drying as opposed to drag drying. And y'all know what drag drying is. It's that quick drying when you're rushing and you're just trying to hurry up and get everything off. But you need to make sure you plan enough time to allow yourself to air dry or to even use a blow dryer on a cool setting or to just towel blot yourself dry. When you drag dry, you're taking out all the natural oils, all the natural moisturizers, and you're causing your skin dryness and possibly flares of eczema and other big problems. The next commandment is thou shalt deodorize. Yes, you must deodorize. Y'all know your girl has been on the hunt and using different natural deodorants and trying to find the one that works perfect for me. The last one I've been using has been native and that's been working really well for me. I try to make sure that I take it and rub it under my arm and rub it with my hand gently as well, just to make sure that it sinks in. But I've been using natural ones to cut down on any boils or any acne or things that can leave dark marks once they heal. Y'all know I have hydratinitis superativa, so I don't want anything to set that off. Next, thou shalt not be ashy. And y'all know I'm always speaking the ashy language. We need to make sure that we are not out here busted and disgusted, knees looking like we've been sliding into home. So let's make sure that we're taking care of that. Y'all know I love Eucerin and Dr. Teal's. Those have been staples for me because they have alpha hydroxies and a lot of other nutrients that really plump out the skin, really help to cut down on acne scarring and hyperpigmentation, but also they put the moisture back into the skin, smoothing out wrinkles, cellulite, stretch marks, all of those things we don't want to see. So moisturization really protects your skin from the outer weather, all that cold weather and chapping of the skin as well with the wool clothing that you're putting on, the cottons, all of that. You want to make sure that your skin has a nice moisture barrier. So I find that really taking that moisture and rubbing it in slowly, taking my time and concentrating on massaging my body also gives my body a better look and feel and it leaves my skin looking radiant. Now, I hope today's video has been amazing for you guys. A shower routine is important. Not only does it help you with your body and all of that, but it helps you with your mind. If you know you're taking good care of your body, you'll feel better about yourself overall. That self-esteem will rise and you will know you out here looking and smelling and feeling good as well. So make sure you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Pace. Special thanks to Jason Bowie of Trinity Media Solutions for co-producing and filming today's video. His information can be found down below in the information section. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.